Hey guys, I'm just continuing straight on from the previous video. In this video, we are working out the imposed action Q on the beams B2 and B3. So, the imposed actions on these beams is just going to be the imposed action from the slab above. As we've always said, the only time you put imposed action is on the slab, which just transfer the transfers throughout the structure. So, if we look back at our diagram, we're looking at B2 and B3. So just taking out those um, that slab distribution onto B2 and B3, we get something that looks like that. Now, this is the exact same scenario as we had for the, um, the previous case with G. So this uh, schematic is the exact same, B2 and B3. The only difference now is just going to be W max. Okay? W max is the slab area load times by the perpendicular length. So the slab area load we found in one of the first videos to be 3 kPa. The slab area load uh, for the dead load was 5.175, but we're doing live load now, so we're looking at the 3 kPa value. So we're going to go W max for this triangle case here will be 3 kPa times by the perpendicular height of 1.5 meters. So 3 by 1.5 gives us 4.5. And W max for this triangle will be the 3 kPa multiplied by perpendicular length 2 meters, giving us 6 kilonewtons per meter. We're then going to find W dash, which is the equivalent uh, rectangular UDL from these triangles. So W max, little l is 1.5, big L is 3. So working this out, 1.5 divide 3 squared times by 4 divide 3, 1 minus that answer times by W max of so 4.5 gives us 3 kilonewtons per meter. For this triangle over here, little l is 2 meters, big L is 4 meters. So 2 divide 4 squared times by 4 divide 3. 1 minus that answer gives us 0.666. As I've said, when you have triangles, this inner part is always going to equal 0 0.666. So I didn't have to do that. Multiply that by 6 gives us 4 kilonewtons per meter. Okay? So therefore, we can say that the imposed action on B2 this beam over here is 3 kilonewtons per meter, and the imposed action on beam 3.